Hey guys, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So let me answer another question. I've, I've got a, a, a lot of them and I'm just kind of working through them. This is from Eric Lozano. Eric, thank you for your question, I really appreciate it. His question is perhaps a topic for another time, but for those who find themselves looking for a new place or having their interests peaked, interests, yeah. why is it that way? Anyway, what would be some red or green flags to look for when checking out a new place to train? This is actually, that's an interesting one. And the reason is because it really comes down to what you expect and what you like. So I can tell you what I look for. Number one is I want to see self-defense practiced. So if I'm watching a particular class, I step in and I watch. And by the way, you know, I don't let people come in and watch. If you come in, you gotta train. So you gotta participate. So I don't let people audit class that way um, because you really don't get the whole experience unless you're on the mat trying it out. Even Rusty. When I hired Rusty, I told him it's on one condition. You need to come to class and you need to experience it. So then that way you know from which perspective I operate. And to his credit, he did. And brought his camera and he was filming the whole time. So here's, here's the thing that I look for. First thing I do is when I walk in that door, I want somebody to greet me and say hi. You know, it, it may be the instructor, it may be a student. It may be anybody in there because that kind of gives you the initial vibe of if they're friendly. Because you wanna make sure that you feel at home there, you feel at ease. A studio is almost like a second home for a lot of our members. I don't know how many of them have keys, but they do. And they can come and go as they please. And I want them to. I want them to feel like they can come and train at the school anytime they want. By me creating this or them taking it on themselves as this school is their home, then that will then project out to other people. So when somebody walks in, Somebody greets them, says, hi, how you doing? My name is whatever. You know, maybe they're teaching a class. Just simply invite them to sit down and, and, and have a watch and let me know if you have any questions and then go back and teach a class. Uh, if it's the instructor, even better. So the first thing I look for is I look for a friendly face when I walk in. Another thing is, although it's attractive to be in a gym and have it be hard and have it be hot or cold or rough, that's not my, that's not my thing anymore. Hickson School, the old Pico Boulevard school, was just like that. It was a hard school. It was a gym. It's, it wasn't inner city. It was in Westwood, which is nice, or West LA, one of the two. But the thing is, it was an old beat up building. It had, it was an auto body paint shop in the front and the back was a karate studio. There were no windows that could close. There was no climate control. The mats were originally one inch and they were down to probably a half an inch. They were so old and worn out. I don't know how often they cleaned the mats. The bathroom was filthy, but still to me, it was, it was home because that's what I was looking for. I was looking for the top jujitsu master in the world to learn under. And that's what it was. There weren't that many people. The practices were hard. Uh, they, were, they were hardcore. Maybe not as hardcore as Helsin school when I was in Hawaii. But at any rate, it was, it was very similar in the way they did things. For me, I'm looking for a place that's clean. I'm looking for mats that, that are clean. And in fact, our mats we clean at least twice a day, even on Sunday. Well, Sunday gets cleaned, um, but maybe it's because nobody trained it, but it gets cleaned anyway because that's the day that the cleaning people come in and clean up. But they even clean the mats. Uh, so I want clean mats. Me, I want also mats that are in good physical condition. I don't want mats that are in disrepair. I don't want mats that are, that have, have smashed spots in them. Mats that have uh, dirt inside. You know, a lot of these tatami style mats, you know, where it's these, these one meter by two meter pieces, they lay them down. They get the textured one for grip. The problem with that is that dirt collects in it and they have to be scrubbed. So I'll look in, I'll look in the cracks and I'll see dirt and for me, red flag, right? If, there, if it's clean, Obviously green flag, right? Because for me, I like clean. Why are clean mats important? Well, clean mats make it much harder for you to catch staff and ringworm. Ringworm is basically athlete's foot somewhere else in the body. And if some, one of your partners, one of your training partners has athlete's foot, you know, you hear about catching them in showers and all that, you can catch them on the mats. And if you are always disinfecting, disinfecting the surface of it, then you kill it and then, you know, you don't know, you, are you gonna check all your, your students' feet? No, you're not gonna. That's an important thing. So clean mats really, for me, is the major thing. It's the top two major things. So, you know, friendly people as well as clean mats. I could have friendly people with dirty mats, I am not training there. 
Simple as that. On the other hand, if I have clean mats and they're a jerk, uh, I don't, may not train there either. So I guess maybe they're equal flags that you need to, for me, that you need to have on the very top. Friendly people, clean mats. With regard to the, the curriculum and all that, that's very important as well because I'm there to learn a particular thing. So for me, I'm looking for self-defense, but for somebody else, they may be looking for competition and that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with, with jujitsu for competition. You just have to know that it's different and you have to know what you want. If you want competition and the school you go to self-defense, then you may need to, that may be a red flag to you. On the other hand, if I'm looking for self-defense and I see competition, red flag and I'm out. Once you get, get to that point, you see that they do self-defense or competition. The mats are clean, the people are friendly. Then you need to see how the coaching style is or how the teaching style is because everybody responds differently to different styles of teaching. Some people will respond better to a coach berating them. You know, not, not, like, not like saying you worthless piece of shit, why can't you do it, nothing like that, but really it's, come on, come on, I need you to work it, come on, what's the matter with you, why can't you do it, you know, but this, people, some people respond better that way, believe it or not. Um, I may raise my voice at times, but it's never really because I'm excited or angry or whatever, I'm pretty low key with regard to my personality. That's cringy, saying hi. <laughs> Hello, I, yeah, I got you. <laughs> But for most, for you know, other people, they don't respond to that type of teaching style. They're more of the, they, they want more of the patient teacher. And, and it's good, you can be patient and you can still be hyped up. It just really depends on what you're looking for and how you respond. If, if you don't respond well to somebody who is soft and easy on you, you respond better to somebody who's hard on you, then you're gonna have to find a coach that's hard on you. On the other hand, you may be one that deals better with a calm type professor who has a calm demeanor and the only time he raises his voice is very select situations, right? It's like, it's like scolding your kids, right? If you always yell at your kids, you yell at your kids, they're gonna be used to yelling at them so the yelling won't have an effect. So what you do then is you just, you know, you have an instructor who selectively knows when to raise his voice and he does. So that's a good thing to, to look for as well, having an instructor whose style of teaching matches your style of learning or your personality. What could be a red flag here could also be a green flag for somebody else. For us, most of our students are professionals. They have families. I don't have too many people that are under 30, and if they are, and you know, let's say they're not in the kids' class, and if they are, they're usually family members of existing members. But for the most part, our members are age 30 and up, with the average probably being around late 30s to early 40s. So if you're young and you walk into a school full of older professional types, that may be a red flag. On the other hand, if you're a professional type and you walk into a school with a lot of young guys, that may be a red flag as well. You may think as a 40 year old, you may think, well, you know, you still remember what it was like when you're 25. And you may think to yourself, you know, I can, I can hang with these guys. You could, but the thing is, it's what I call, you're gonna have a series of Pyrrhic victories. What that means, so you don't have to Google it if you don't already know it. What that means is that you can win, but you took so much damage winning that winning really wasn't worth the battle. And that's what it is. When you, when you are a 40-something engaging with 20-somethings, you may win, but you're gonna hurt like hell when you get back home. Your body's gonna ache, you're gonna be busted up. Whereas these young guys, they recuperate fast. You may smash them for a little while and the next day they'll be right up ready to go again and they don't have any effects, any ill effects from what, what happened the day before. On the other hand, you'll be hurting for three days. So that may be a red flag for you. But some of us like to think that, hey, you know, you know, 40 is a new 20, which is bullshit. But that's what I think and I can do it, you know, and, and I know people that are like that and they learn the hard way that it's not really what you wanna do, they end up getting broken and, and they end up quitting. Right? And the goal is to get in and not quit, right? So look for a school that matches you, matches your desire for friendliness, matches your cleanliness, matches your learning personality, and matches your demographic. Because those, if you can get all those taken care of, then the hard part of learning will not be made more hard by the other stuff that have very little to do with getting good at jujitsu. So I hope that helped and feel free to keep commenting. I try to engage as much as possible, commenting, asking questions, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll do my best to help you out. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Happy training.
Bye-bye now.